My name is Elizabeth Barrett and I'm a founding member of the Carmel Valley Historical Society. The society was founded in 1987 and it started with a group of people who met for coffee and, at a condo and uh, discussed how we could begin to start preserving the history of Carmel Valley which we saw was rapidly beginning to slip away with the ripping down of some old barns that we thought were historic and uh, taking down of old trees and so forth. So I began to write for the newsletter of the Historical Society and then there was a newspaper called the Carmel Valley Sun and a very nice couple, Stan and Isabel Hall, had purchased the newspaper. They're very professional. I think they'd written for a back east newspaper in retirement had moved to Carmel Valley. And I offered to write a weekly column for them on Carmel Valley history which kept me really busy looking up things to write. And I saved my files, thank goodness, because about two years ago I was approached by the Arcadia Publishing Company who publishes regional histories. There are about 5,000 titles all across the United States that this company has had authors write books on. They're all about towns, communities, and so forth. And they asked me if I would write the Carmel Valley book. And then they said they'd asked four or five other people who had turned them down, and I thought, oh, no. But um, I said, okay, because I wanted this book to be a fundraiser for the Historical Society because we we're building a history center in Carmel Valley Village at the park. So as I said previously, thank God I saved all my files, which were a lot that I uh, used to write for the Carmel Valley Sun. And I had them all in a certain order because one day I was sort of cleaning out and I thought, what if I ever wrote a book about Carmel Valley history? How would I format this and what order would I put it in so I'd arranged my files just for fun in the file folder. So that was a lucky thing because the writing portion of the book turned out to be not the hard part. It was finding 240 historic photos and illustrations to satisfy the requirements of the company. And that was an adventure all of its own and added to that was the fact that I had five months from start to finish to get the book done and in and not only that but in according to their format and they had very strict rules and I got a workbook and I got a set of instructions and I was told if it's not done their way they'll just send it back and there's something called a timeline and the clock will tick so that's that caused actually a lot of energy and fortunately my husband's a photographer and we set about we went to the California Archives room of the Monterey uh, Library where Dennis Copeland was very helpful we plowed through boxes of donated photos that the Carmel Valley Historical Society very fortunately had in its archives. We went to the Harrison Memorial Library in Carmel. I was in touch with the Bancroft and with the Steinbeck Center and all kinds of places to amass enough photos and then to go through them and find which photos would tell the story best. And fortunately, there have been a number of books already published by this company on Monterey, Carmel, and the surrounding area. And I was able to go to the library and see which photos had already been used so that I could go and find other ones. For example, Carmel Mission. There are th three shots or so of Carmel Mission that you just see over and over and over again. And fortunately, at the California Archives room in the Monterey Library, they have probably a hundred different photos have been taken over time in various states of repair or dilapidation of the mission, drawings and so forth, and we were able to come up with some unusual photos and views, and that, that just helped tremendously. I wanted to make a book with a little bit of a twist that would offer information that no one had yet read, because the book does begin with the early inhabitants of Carmel Valley, the Rumson, and the Esalen, and it goes on through the founding of the mission period, the Spanish and then Mexican land grants, and then the rancho period of the early American settlers following statehood. And uh, then I have a fun chapter that is on famous faces through time. And I was able to get some 
photos and illustrations of various people, Hollywood personalities, banditos such as Tiburcio Vasquez, our very own Leon Panetta, who lives about a mile from where my husband and I live. And then I ended up the book on a chapter on preserving our past and talking about how the historical society has been endeavoring to save what we can save in light of the fact that so many places have vanished before we had anything in place to try to save them. So we hope that when people get through reading the book, they will understand the value of historic preservation. That's the main focus is where we were, where we are now, where we hope to go. I was most surprised, I think, in having a phone call from the Russell Walter family, and they were kind enough to sit with me, and they brought several boxes of family photos and let me go through them and use them and let me take them home and let my husband scan them. And I found out that they are descended from a very old family that started out in Monterey and ended up in Carmel Valley. They were married into the Barandas, and the Walters are still living on land that has been in their family for generations. And they were so sharing with me about this. We often think of Carmel Valley as a, as a lot of newcomers because for so long, especially during the 19th and into the early 20th century, there were only six families, six ranch families that lived out there. So neighbors were few and far between. And here the Walters were just full of stories and, and were willing to share that with me. So that was a lot of fun. When we think of Del Monte, we think of the Del Monte Hotel, and the name Del Monte later was translated over to the site where Los Laureles Lodge is now. Los Laureles came from the Los Laureles land grant, which was about the third largest land grant in Carmel Valley. It stretched from approximately today's Garland Ranch out to beyond Carmel Valley Village, and from the top of Laurelis grade clear across to Snively's Ridge. It was 6,600 acre ranch that was given over to cattle raising until the American period when hog farming and grain growing and fencing were brought in. The most famous face to own this before the Del Monte Corporation bought it was Nathan Spaulding, who was the 15th mayor of Oakland, who for reasons I don't know, came down and bought Rancho Los Laureles just a few years after the original Barandas sold it. And he brought modern fencing and modern ranching and modern irrigation to Carmel Valley. Two or three years after he sold out, in the early 1880s, the Pacific Improvement Company purchased the property, and this spun off into the Del Monte properties. So you have this dairy, which is still there. The milk house that you will see in the village was the part of that dairy ranching industry. The Del Monte dairy out there produced the butter and milk and cheese, not only commercially, but for the guests at the Del Monte Hotel in Monterey. And, the, and then where Los Laureles Lodge is right now, which it was once the managers, the ranch manager's home and the employees housing, this became the, the nucleus of a resort, a rustic resort. And guests at the Del Monte Hotel in Monterey would come over by wagon, come over Laurelis grade, and spend perhaps weeks hunting and fishing and rusticating, as they called it in those days. The ladies might just come over for lunch in a Surrey one day. So this spun off into one of the very well-known resorts, which is still going. It's, it's it had several generations of owners and several metamorphoses in the meantime. But it's still a fun place to go because you get a little feel for what it looked like back then. I was living here on the peninsula when Joan Baez got into all this hot topic in the news. She arrived here in 1965, and she owned a home on Miramonte Road, and she started a school. It was called the Institute for the Study of Nonviolence. It was located in a building that had housed the So Help Me Hannah Poison Oak Remedy Factory, and before that it had been the, it had been the second Tularcita School, and that building is still there. It's on the property of Stone Pine Resort now, and as you drive into Stone Pine, you will see the little building. And she, for about a year and a half or two years, had this institute for the study of nonviolence, and people enrolled, and she had experts come and discuss nonviolence and teach them, and. The neighbors were unhappy uh, about this because they thought that her students were beatniks that would go around barefoot and bearded and uh, unshaven and not washed, and it would bring a bad 
influence to Carmel Valley and they didn't want it. And if you read Joan Didion's book called Slashing Toward Bethlehem, there's a chapter in there called Where the Kissing Stops. And it tells this whole episode of Joan Baez coming and the neighbors going to the Board of Supervisors and asking that she not be given the permit for to use the school. And one of the people who protested, who's in the book, was Dr. Gerald Peckus, who happened to be our family's veterinarian at the time, so I've got his picture in my book as well. Um, Joan and her husband later did move, um, close the institute and they moved up to Palo Alto, but during the time she was here, there was hardly a day go by that the newspapers didn't have a story about what was going on. It was such an unusual thing for its day. I'm really pleased that Carmel Valley has retained so much of its rural character because when you take that wonderful drive from Highway 1 at Carmel Valley Road and you drive into Carmel Valley Village, you're going to see a great deal of the countryside looking much as it did a hundred years ago. Yes, there are housing developments and uh, resorts and so forth, but there's grand sweeps of mountain and forest and pastures and it's, it's really a very beautiful thing. And of course the village itself has now become a kind of trendy place because they have boutique wineries and tasting rooms and little shops so it makes for a nice day out to go for lunch and taste the wine and experience the atmosphere. And if you keep on going past the village there's also a beautiful drive on Carmel Valley Road that goes all the way to Highway 101 and that's very very rustic full of ranches and beautiful sweeps of scenery. So if anyone, I would recommend to anyone if they have a day at their disposal just get in your car at uh, Highway 1 and Carmel Valley Road, take a nice slow drive, stop in the village for lunch and if you like keep on going. You might enjoy a little drive into yesteryear.